I'm James. Hello, I'm Ben. Hello, I'm Josh Holm. <laughs> <laughs> and we're Biffy Clyro. And this is a podcast pool. Kerrang.com avec Simon Jung. <laughs> you go. Simon Jung. Work that one out. Merci. Enjoy. Bon appétit. Au revoir. Au revoir. Adieu. Cool, so we're in New York uh, with Biffy Clyro. <laughs> Hey. Hey. So yeah, you're nearing the completion of Only Revolutions. Um, can you tell us about the process and uh, you know where it's taking you up to today? Yeah. Yes, the uh, the joy of writing songs, I guess, has taken us to Los Angeles for two months to record with the wonderful Canadian hoser. He's not a type of hoser, obviously, but uh, Gar Garth Richardson, Ben Catlin, Dave Shipman, mixed by Andy Walls. And uh, it's fucking the dream team for us. Mm -hmm. We did work with Thalem and Puzzle, Shift Monsters and a bit of a new addition. He worked with us in the mountains last year and um, and just good 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 guys and they helped helped us make our record exactly what we wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So how do you uh, describe the sound of the album compared to Puzzle? Um well it's Huge, you know. We tried to make a big sound. Um, it makes puzzle sound small, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. We thought we could have made the biggest album we could with puzzle, but if somehow managed to make this one even bigger, but um, it still sounds like you know Biffy, hopefully. Yeah, you know, just another evolutionary step in, in Biffy's journey, I guess. And it's the equivalent of losing losing our tails, I guess. <laughs> tails the last thing to go. Mm -hmm. And uh, but yeah, you know, when you're making when you're into your fifth record, you know. It's, Got to keep trying new things and keep yourself excited. You know, it's it's uh, easy for bands to get into a lull and just gonna do what they do and gonna do it slightly worse every time. But we we prefer to take a chance, I think, and, and take risks in every record and see what happens. Yeah. Um. So you've got a special guest on the album. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Making the the ginger triumvirate. <laughs> uh, can you tell us how Josh Holm got involved um, with the song Bubbles? So Ben and James were auditioning singer guitarists <laughs> after Puzzle after the. Like we were singing guitars they had for Puzzle, <laughs> and, uh, and Josh was uh, the only ginger in town. Was he? He yeah, he jumped to a chance. He was too tall to like, make the band full time because he'd make us look too small. Yeah. But uh, we got him in for one song, and he came in and put down his ginger grooves on yeah. uh, one of our songs. We kind of we toured with, with Queen's Stone Age a couple of times and can make good friends with those guys. So it was uh, nice of Josh to come along and lend us his time. Yeah, he's really he's a spectacular guitarist, so it's very very easy for him to come in and just kind of vibe off a song and just kind of come up with something amazing. Mm -hmm. So he turned it slightly like into the song bubbles and now, but with some kind of space rock on yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, space rock. So he kind of he put his his kid to bed and then came out and just wow. That's not a euphemism, he actually. Yeah, actually, actually he put his kid to bed. To bed so he's a family man. Hats off to Cap, yeah, to Cap and Josh. Thank you, Josh. Um, so you've got strings on the album. Uh, can you tell us about the. Uh, the man behind the strings and uh, who his son is. Mr. Mr. David Campbell was his name, and his son is Beck Campbell. <laughs> Beck Hans. <laughs> it's just Beck. Um, yes, and uh, the man is an absolute genius. Probably, probably one of the most musical men you ever like to meet. So he put some, uh, arranged some strings for us, arranged some woodwind and some brass, and we had a jolly old time in Ocean Way record with that. And, yeah, it's a pleasure to work with uh, such a notified genius. Yeah, um, Ocean Way has had a, quite a, a, a roster of talent pass through its doors over the years. Um, could you tell us who's been before you and uh, who's Mike? You know, you kind of sang into and things like that. We, um, yeah, like you said, the studio's been there for a long time, and um, they've had some amazing people back in the day. I guess it was Frank Sinatra and Sammy Davis Jr. and Elvis. Elvis back in the day, and then you know more recently, kind of Rolling Stones and the Beach Boys and. John. More recently, that's the yeah. more recently, yeah. recently, you know, like early 70s, late 60s. <laughs> More recently, Dr. Dre. Yeah, yeah Dr. Dre, motherfucker. Yeah. Snip Dogg, motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. Stone Temple Pilots, motherfucker. Yeah. Faith Hill, yeah. motherfucker. <laughs> Faith Hill. <laughs> <laughs> but the studio, the studio still as it was back in the day. He has here, Robbie didn't change the place at all. <laughs> Michael Jackson! <laughs> he recorded it as well. Yeah, and, and the wall of shame, we've got like, photos of every, every band that's kind of recorded there. We are, we are wedged. Our four neighbours in the wall are BB King, Brian Wilson, Jerome Stones, and Fleetwood Mac, which is uh, pretty exciting. Not I'm sure fun. they're chuffed as well. Yeah. <laughs> next, uh, next yeah. Yeah. Um, so the album's called Only Revolutions. Uh, 
Can you tell us about where the inspiration for the title came from? I don't know. It seems like one day I was just chilling around and the words just popped into my mouth. It just felt, it just felt right, didn't it? It did. I don't know where it came from. It's entirely original. I've never heard anything like that. This guy, this guy's already written a book about her album. Yeah. Go. Yeah. It's a companion piece to our record. But yeah, we we took it from this book, which is a trippy. Uh, he's an amazing author, he wrote House of Leaves, The Fifty Year Sword, um, and Only Revolutions, and it's uh, basically the album's kind of about relationships with loved ones, you know, family and, and otherwise, and, uh, and, you know, just the title of the book just felt like it was, uh, you know, the song's going to try and tell both people's perspectives, and, and that's similar to what the book did, so it was really just the, the title of the book really fitted the kind of lyrics and the record, you know, and I think by the title we always should kind of fit with the record, yeah. you know. You know, kind of, we quite like them silly song names, but you know the, the album title is always quite important. You know, should kind of sum up some of the record, I guess. Yeah, um, you mentioned the Fifty Year Sword. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a highly sought after uh, book. Um, a signed version is currently fetching uh, a thousand dollars or something. About that, yeah. Yeah. Um, you've you've um, you found one. You've bought one. Yeah, I managed to snare one. Not a signed version, obviously. I don't quite have the money to spend that in a book, but um, yeah, I got one for sixty quid uh, on eBay. Good old eBay, and uh, I was so chuffed because they only made a thousand. You know, he signed like the first hundred, and um, and it's really impossible to get. It was like a Dutch publisher, and it was like a Dutch artist that did all the, you know, the, the illustrations inside, and uh, it's just a great book. It's a kind of novella, and uh, yeah, I was really thrilled to get that. Yeah. So, uh, I if anyone's got a signed one out there, <laughs> swap for an yeah, swap one. for an unsigned one. I could put a big Z like Mark Z down the screen. You'd never know. Yeah. Um, so the album's going to be out uh, October time, mm -hmm. um, and then you'll be going quite a lengthy UK tour. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us about the bands you're going to take out on the road and uh, why they appeal to you personally? Yeah, yes, we've got yeah. a couple of great bands. Mm -hmm. We've got Pulled Apart by Horses. Um, awesome. A really, really great band from Britain. Um, and Manchester Orchestra, coming out of Atlanta. Atlanta Georgia. 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 Um, a band made it, Manchester Orchestra, a band we toured with in the States. Um, Sometime a couple of years ago, we kind of made really good friends with them, and uh, an amazing band, great songs. Red Dead. <laughs> yeah, you should come and come and check it out when you come to see us. You know, yeah, yeah. Get to get there, like it's a. It's stuck around. It's stuck around for us. It's stuck around for us. Yeah, yeah these point. great bands. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's important to us. You know, it's nice. It's important to help out. You know, kind of younger British bands as well, and also you know, it's nice to have a band that we're friends with at like Manchester Orchestra. But it's a very exciting bill. You know, it's. It's a rock bill. Mm -hmm. Ain't no electro nonsense in this shit. <laughs> Part of my <an> album. Yeah. <laughs> um, by the time the podcast comes out, uh, your new single, That Golden Rule, will be mm -hmm. online and in shops. Um, <laughs> you caused quite a commotion in uh, West London during the filming of it. Can you just tell us about the uh, process that uh, you know caused so many residents sure. to complain? Probably. We were, it was a. Uh, a very long shoot. I think we went from about about ten in the morning till about three in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, but like the next morning, obviously, Cheswick we house, go backwards. Right? Yeah, Cheswick house. Cheswick. And uh, there was lots of people kind of lazing in the grass, and people walking dogs, and with babies, and our kind of chin was blaring out, <laughs> this, out of this bloody house all day. And uh, we, I managed to fuck my tooth, bust my lip. We broke glass, mm -hmm. it seemingly as much as possible, yeah. really, like unintentional, but and. Uh, yeah, it was a long day. We felt awful. We were there's a bit where we were in a in like a tent where there's smoke bombs, and I don't know if anyone's ever been near a smoke bomb. But when eight of them are going off around you in, a, in an enclosed area, it's not it's not really a shit ton of fun. So I imagine they use them, use that in wars. Actually. Right, they <laughs> smoke them out because you can't see, you can't breathe if you're sick. Awful. But that's what we go through to make an awesome video. We edited out all the puke <laughs> from the actual final edit. But all, all the eye bleeding. <laughs> yeah, eye bleeding years later. Um, yeah, lots of lots of searchlights and, and commotion and loud loud music. So I think the neighbours of Chiswick House were too happy that day. But hope you made a good video. Yeah. Um, finally, you've been in New York for the last couple of weeks. Um, what kind of places have you been visiting during your time off? Any jazz clubs? We did go to jazz. Funny you should mention that. that. We went to a wonderful jazz place called Smalls and I had a proper night of, of New York jazz. Got to meet the performers, made way too much noise for the rest of the jazzy people there. They were all like, because they know when to clap, but you didn't think they could get out a good drum for them. Woo! Shit, you know. 
one, <laughs> one of those vibes. And uh, but yeah, a wonderful time. And with, I think James went up the the entire state bastard. All of the all that was all, the, all of the state building. <laughs> all of the state, the entire state the building was up. And um, where was it? Reps. 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 Saw pizza. Uh, and parks. I tried to, tried to go to the Museum of Modern Art to see a Tom Burton exhibition, but just so you know, if you come to New York, it's closed enough fucking Tuesday. Yeah. Why Tuesday? No one knows. So they're fucking closed on Tuesday. Yeah. So, so, so don't know. go on a Tuesday like I did. I went to the toy shop today that was in the movie Big. Nice! We had a jump out there. It wasn't there. It wasn't there. So that's another letdown for you. Don't go to that toy shop. Expect <laughs> <laughs> the bully chops. You're a shit. With, uh, with, with like, the owner of the building. It doesn't happen. It's not in the movies. If you woke up one day and discovered you were a man, what would you do for the day? <laughs> Play with a man boost. <laughs> That's brilliant. Did you watch it? Uh, yes, if we woke up and were men one day, we would get a job. I know, we would just get a job. <laughs> Please don't tell us to wake up. But no, it's been great. Like We, we worked, you know, LA was amazing. Mm -hmm. It's a bit overcast today yes. in New York. You can't really tell how humid it is. Yeah. It's been quite well, clammy, but... Um, it's been nice, you know, we're in the studios with Andy, this is a part of the studios and he's a, uh, it's more relaxing time for us, you know, in the mixings, because you get to, we get to finally kind of hear all the hard work and, and you know, what, what actually it all sounds like together, so it's, you know, the last few days it's really sounding like a record now, you know, and then we've got our track listing in mind and we know what's going to open the record and probably what's going to close it and, you know, it's it's these things that only only happened really in the last few days, don't they? Nice. Yeah, I don't know, it's exciting times, times. and then, then you make a white vagina. <laughs> uh, well, on that, I think it's time. That fucking bombshell. <laughs> 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 we'll see you in October. Bye.